Good. Hello everyone, Multidark Samus here, and welcome back to Ace Attorney Dual Destinies. When we left off, I was confused. I'm still confused. But, before we get into this, disclaimer, any and all spoilers will result in an instant ban. Bans will be revoked at the end of the game. Multi-offenders will be banned for a year. Wow, I've gotten really good at that. Alright, so, um... I was... I had some updates and I already forgot. Oh, right, so I... I talked to Techie. And what I learned is that the monstrous turnabout, aka the one I'm currently fighting through, is apparently generally considered one of the worst cases in the series. And I was advised to skip it. To which I said, I can't skip it, it has lore. So I won't be skipping it. However, with that in mind, if I start struggling through it because I have not enjoyed this case that much, I will probably just ask for straight up answers because I've lost care in this case. This case makes no sense to me. And it's kind of annoying. So let's jump into this, and somewhere down in this stream, I'll mention why I'm still pissed off with OBS. And with the Linux community in a general sense. A very general sense. And gotta turn up my own volume. I'd ask how's the game volume, but not much I can do about it. Is this where I left off? Give me a second, I need to verify something. Okay. I couldn't remember because all I remember of last stream is that I literally just rage quit. So I went to go check the VOD, which is now live and out of order, but then I went and created a playlist on YouTube, so if... There's now a playlist and all the videos should be in order. I think episode 7 is finished rendering, but episode 7 got uploaded after 8 due to technical difficulties of OBS crashing in the middle of a stream, so when I pulled the VOD, I had Techie um, render both parts together so that we wouldn't have another episode 5, because episode 5 did the same thing. I went on, I spent, I don't know, 20-30 minutes today working up a fix for it. I'll get to the details later, but for now, apparently we just are on the next part. Oh, so she's still determined to go on that run. Oh, hello, person who grew half a person in the in a matter of a couple months. Isn't she always in her stage costume? Also borrowing a copy of Pokemon Diamond, so now I have Diamond and Pearl, and I'm working my way through the Gen 4 Pokedex very slowly. You know what the best part is? The best part is that because I care so little about this, I actually know who 
the suspect is. And I'm completely shocked his name hasn't appeared at all in trial. Also found out I missed something blatantly obvious like the fact that the killer apparently appeared at the beginning of the case. And during the first investigation. And I've been calling it this entire time. I know I normally say spoilers result in an instant ban, but just... A, this game is... A couple years old. God, this isn't Apollo Justice. This game is... I don't know, how old is the 3DS? Anyways. When have I ever been wrong? That's what... Two years after 3DS sounds about right. Um, so 2013... So it's been six years, so technically... I can spoil the game. I just won't accept spoilers because I haven't played it, but... Also, you know, I... have More than half of my theories and things I say... Have been true. And the ones that haven't... Either I didn't have enough information and therefore I came up with what I knew at the time, or I accidentally the whole thing and came up with the theory that was so absurd I didn't think it could possibly be true, and it turns out it was half true. Case 1, Apollo Justice, when I said that Kristoff was in cahoots with Phoenix Wright to commit murder, and it turned out that Kristoff was the one who committed murder. I'm brilliant. It's funny, I can figure out how these cases end, but I can't figure out how to get to the point I'm trying to prove. I, I'm just... I'm a walking contradiction. Also, forgot to mention, I did start the stream 10 minutes early, because I could. So this stream will be about, if everything goes smoothly, 2 hours and 10 minutes. I'm also going to try to get through this case a little bit faster than normal. Oh, thank god. I... You took away three pieces of evidence. I'm still at three. Oh my god, I'm gonna end up with like five pages of evidence. You know we get half the number of, well... Maybe not half. We could cut down the number of pages by putting, oh, I don't know, say four pieces of evidence on top, four pieces of evidence on the bottom, and then we'll have eight pieces of evidence per page instead of five, which will save up a fair, a fair chunk of space. Not quite half. A little under half. You don't want to know where that stuff goes. But we already know where it goes. Great. My favorite things to do investigating. I still have to scroll one by one. I mean, I don't have to because I do have the touch screen, but I do it anyways because I don't like using the touchscreen. Plays on a console with a touchscreen, refuses to use the touchscreen. I kind of want to play Kid Icarus Uprising. Also an older game. I'm actually surprised with how old it is and how little I know. And the fact that Super Smash Bros. is just a Kid Icarus DLC. The more I watch the streamer, who I refuse to refer to by name, in case he does find me, or, yeah, in case he finds me, um, the more I watch his him play Uprising, the more I realize that literally half of the items in Super Smash Bros. belong to Kid Icarus, to the Kid Icarus series. And then Super Smash Bros. Brawl, half the enemies that appeared in Subspace Emissary are based are based on or taken straight out of Kid Icarus. Also, it looks like a really fun game and it has some of the greatest 
Uh, honestly, it's on par with Metal Gear Solid for the amazingness of the dialogue. The game does not take itself seriously, but at the same time, it has sections where you can tell they're just making fun of the game, and then sections where it's like, holy crap, this lore is actually kind of intense. Not quite to the state of Metal Gear Solid, which includes a lot of very sensitive topics. Usually implied, but then also stated. Oh, he doesn't look happy. I think I upset him. See, you know, here, here I thought Metal Gear Solid breaks the fourth wall a lot. Yeah, so does Kid Icarus. So much so that one of the voice actors actually drops her voice to say a specific line that breaks the fourth wall. She completely drops character. Also found out that that's the same voice actress as um, Princess Bubblegum from Adventure Time. I had a lot of trouble placing that name. I, I had- I was close, but I was completely wrong show and she does not voice anyone from the show I was thinking of, but then when I looked it up and read it and I was like, oh yeah, it sounds just like Princess Bubblegum, and then I started listening to the dialogue and was like, okay, this is just Princess Bubblegum as a god. Not surprising, a lot of voice actors do that. It's easier to just have one voice than try to come up with a billion voices Especially since you can perfect that one voice. Look, voice acting is difficult. I should know. I don't do it. Anyway, gotta get through this. Alright, I'm 12 minutes in. So, um... I think that's enough time to start complaining about the BS I have to go through with OBS in order to get, oh, I don't know, Streamlabs chats and the Streamlabs notification. Because on Linux, OBS Studio doesn't have a web, a web viewer. It won't. And if you go and grab the source for their web viewer, it will not work on Linux. I didn't test it. But I found a Linux port that is strictly Linux, and Dev said in the README that needs to be updated a couple more times than it already has three months ago. Extremely outdated. But the README explicitly states that he could not get the OBS Studios version of the web view to work on Linux, so he built a Linux version that is pretty much functionally the exact same, just supposedly it works on Linux. As with anything I ever have to deal with, naturally I'm the one person who has trouble. How did she get into the room? That's not a ladder, that's a step ladder. Apollo, stop discriminating against ladders. Sorry, Trucy. Alright. So the issue I had with, I believe it's called OBS Web Viewer or something, I don't remember, I found it on GitHub. So the one I'm using now is called QT Web Kit, I think? Checking. QT Web Kit Browser. So I found out OBS, OBS Studio uses Qt. Probably Qt 4, although it might have been updated to Qt 5, I don't know. An open source GUI software. Well, library. 
one that I actually prefer over all the others, aside from their license, which forces you to either pay them for a commercial license or open source your stuff. I mean, I'm okay with this. It's just, I love Qt. I love it a lot more than, I, than GTK. I don't like GTK. It's hard to work with. So anyways, because of this, there's some limitation on what you can do. Those sound effects are pretty nice. Um. So anyway, so what I'm using is Cute WebKit Browser. Right? Is that what I said? Anyways. And it works. Sometimes, but it started crashing OBS Studio, and I think the reason is because it's like three years old, and OBS Studio has updated in the past three years several times. I'm starting to worry that it's no longer compatible 100%. So I looked for a solution. My solution was, I think, OBS Web Viewer. I think is what it was called. I can't check. Well, the issue is that the person in their post outright said they did they that their um released binary would not because Techie, I've shown you my setup. These the um notifications in chat don't render in Firefox. It's a special it's a special URL that allows it to capture literally just the text. It's much easier if I don't have to capture another window, especially because I actually use my Firefox window. Then I'd need three open windows for Firefox, which would destroy my system. And yeah. It would mean resizing it every single time. I actually at one point was capturing a Firefox window. And it gave me a lot of trouble because every time I wanted to do it, I'd have to resize it perfectly to fit into the display. Otherwise, it would appear off. So it just it's a lot easier to have a web, browser, a web viewer. The issue is, the person has said that they, their binary releases would not contain audio support. Which means my notifications wouldn't make a sound, and if I needed sound for anything, which I really don't, but I don't always see the notification, but I hear the sound, which is how I know if someone subscribes, or, um, I guess follows, because I'm not on YouTube anymore. I anyway. So I do use the sound, so my decision was compile it from source, which I thought this will be great. That silence is to be taken as it was not great. I struggled. Number one, it relies on something else. It relies on Chromium extension framework, I think, and the version that they linked me to was made by the Spotify team, so that was interesting. I need to do some research on who owns what now. So I got that working. That was actually really easy because they release it in binary format. All I have to do is, I don't really understand it, but generate a wrapper for the DLL, I don't know why. But that was something I had to do. Well, that went off without a hitch. I got CEF set up perfectly. And, um... So when I finally got that working and figured out what I was doing wrong, because it's very rare for me to run a make file and have to pass it arguments, so I forget that it's one dash, not two dashes, so that was just me being stupid for about five minutes trying to figure out why it wouldn't accept anything and why it kept looking in the wrong places for the files. Well, I got that working. Crash. No, not crash. Compiler error. 
the code didn't compile. So naturally what I do is I go to, back to GitHub and I look at the issue reports, nothing. Nothing about a compiler error. Now, my experience with compiler errors is that I'm the only person who gets them. I'll take someone else's source code, I'll try to compile it, and their source code will not compile. But then, everyone else, it seems to be fine. So typically I don't issue a bug report or anything because I'm like, well, they'll just tell me that I did something wrong, even though I know I didn't do anything wrong. I followed the instructions as best as I could because one of those instructions made no sense. Setting up CEF made no sense. So it didn't compile, which means I'm still using a three-year-old plugin for OBS that causes it to crash if I do anything with it. Yes! Erd finally got a, an alpha release, so I can mess around with that tomorrow. I probably won't, but... Uh, I guess it's technically a dev release. So anyways, I, I can't get it to compile. And it errors out with something I can't fix. It seems like whatever... It seems like it's incompatible with the latest version of OBS Studio. Which, to me, makes no sense. But I can't really tell. I can't figure out where the error exactly is, if it's with the CEF, or if it's with OBS Studio, because it turns out that at a certain point, the different versions... Um, so the different versions of CEF would sometimes cause it to fail. So you'd have to compile it with the right version, and they had an entire issue report two years ago keeping track of the versions. It was two years old and had been closed, had not been updated recently at all. So I can forget about checking that because clearly no one else is. Now, this readme had been updated three months ago and still contained extremely outdated information like, I don't know, linking me to an issue report closed two years ago? So no help there. But the latest update to the code was... I might have my numbers wrong. The latest update might have been three months ago, and the readme might have been five. Point being, the readme is horribly out of date. Even though it was just updated for semi-recently. So, you know. I'm really frustrated with the inability to get a good web viewer for OBS Studio on Linux. And I'm even more frustrated by programmers who... I mean, I can't figure it out. Why would it work for one person but not work for anyone else? Unless it is an issue... It was updated a week ago. I don't remember the exact numbers. But... I can't imagine that they would update the master branch with something that doesn't compile. Oh, his name is Bobby Fulbright? So, you know, that was part of my day. Also, got back into Monster Hunter World, which has been surprisingly fun. All things considered. I've never been very big on online gaming. Mainly because I've never had internet good enough to handle it. And the one issue I have with Monster Hunter World is the fact that it is strictly an online game. 
sure, I can create a private lobby and have no one join me. But the issue is that the game is online. A lot of the features rely on an internet connection and just being online. And I'd rather it have optional online as opposed to forcing me into a server every time I want to play. Granted, I did find out accidentally that if you aren't connected to the internet, it will actually load up a single player server instead of attempting to access the online servers, which would not really greatly remove any features. You'd lose access to the bounty system, at least the, the um, global bounty system, but it should still have access to the local bounty system. But even Metal Gear Solid 5, which is not really a massive online game, the online system is just a small portion of it, but Metal Gear Solid 5 lets you choose between being online or offline. And you lose a lot of helpful features offline. But this one is just... I can't figure out how to toggle offline mode without disconnecting my PS4 from the internet, which isn't my goal. And well, for me it's not that big of a deal, because I can handle playing, it, playing online, I just choose not to because I don't like dealing with people I don't know. I could see that being an issue for someone else, like say someone who doesn't have PS Plus and so they can't use networking features. And I could see, like if I didn't know about this and I didn't have PS Plus, I would probably never have purchased the game, I would probably never have played it because it's such a... They want you to play it online, and I find that to be kind of dumb. From my understanding, no other Monster Hunter games of the series have been online. I could be wrong. I didn't play the Wii version. It also has some other things that I wish were a little different, but... I... This is my second attempt at playing it. And the first time it was interesting, but I kind of lost interest in it. Because I found it to get really boring due to the difficulty level of it, which for me was really high. Well, I decided to boot up the game because I wanted to play something grindy that wasn't Pokemon because I wanted more action. I wanted to actually feel like I was playing a game and not just sitting here pressing buttons. No offense to you, Ace Attorney, because I love this game too. And I am just clicking buttons. Hold on. I misread something. Ah. Okay, I got a little bit confused. But anyways, so um... I'm trying to play this and commentate on other stuff just to get this out of the way. And, um, so you know, so I just, I popped the disc back in a couple of days ago and decided to reset my character and try a different playstyle. So my first playthrough, I did the Twin Knives, which I kind of figured would fit my playstyle. Careless and fast-paced. And it did until I realized that, that playstyle does not work with Monster Hunter. It actually relies on your ability to survive a lot better than I can, because it takes a lot longer to kill things in that game than I was used to. You, know, you couldn't just go up and slash at something a couple of times and its health would run out. It was actually, you know, hunting creatures with armor, and they acted like that. So, 
you know, that was my first attempt. This time, I decided against it. I looked at the bow and I said, I'm not sure I want to attempt ranged. Sorry, I got distracted. Um... So, anyways, um, so I didn't want to attempt range because I knew that that would backfire pretty greatly. Just pretty much as soon as you anger one of the monsters, they'll just run right at you. And not having melee, granted it's been a while, so I can't remember if bows actually have a melee form. But... I... I I helped it to not do it. Also, because my brother, who is the reason why I got the game and won't play with me, shocker there. Um, he, he said that there was only really one good bow, and it's a very long way away from being able to craft it. So, this time I went with Sword and Shield, because I figured maybe I can get used to a more careful place. Actually, I think initially I went with a spear? I can't remember all the weapons. I went with a weapon that was... That, that, the description had stated that it's fast-paced and designed for dodging. Such that, you know, I could be careless and right up against the monster, but also maybe have a chance. And I think that lasted a whole of, like, one battle, probably. And then I decided I didn't like that, so I went with Sword and Shield, because I figured, well, I can learn to block. And then I'll have less time spent wasting stamina jumping around. I still waste all my stamina jumping around, but it's actually gone surprisingly well. Also, it's more like a shield and knife than a sword and knife. The, the blade is really short, and looks like a knife. And I have, I've enjoyed it, even just grinding, because I have been doing a lot of grinding trying to upgrade my weapons. And then I actually learned about a lot of features I didn't know about when I first played it. Features that actually make the grinding a little more bearable, like, you know, investigations. Essentially, being paid to go out and kill monsters to collect their parts and build better tools so you know also found out how to do expeditions so I can just go out without being on a time limit but I found that I actually enjoy doing the investigations more because well I typically knew exactly what I was after I'm after this particular monster and I need these particular parts so if I just, if I do an investigation for that monster, I get the parts, and I get paid in more monster parts. So I did that. And then I progressed in the story a little bit because I was running out of, I was getting bored, and realized that I wouldn't be getting a better weapon anytime soon because I don't really know what I need right now, since the game won't always tell you what parts you need until you've already collected them. You, you actually have to collect parts for it to tell you what parts you need for a weapon. Otherwise it just appears as a question mark. So yeah, the next tier sword that I want happens to be blocked out right now. You know, that's pretty much been my gaming experience lately. Although, I did get, um, I don't remember if I mentioned this, I got Knights of the Old Republic running on Linux. Through Steam Play, which I found out was a thing. 
I forgot that Steam was pushing for their own derivative of wine called Proton. Did a bit of research to figure out how to get it to run smoothly, found out that it's a very... Wait, that's not surprising at all. It's a glitchy game. It was glitchy on Windows XP. It's glitchy everything past Windows XP. It is a very broken game. Fun as hell. But broken. And glitchy. So I found out how to not break the menus. How to get it to work on Linux. Sort of. Can't really change the resolution. Changing the resolution breaks the game. Full, full screen breaks the game. I wouldn't play it in full screen anyways because that always breaks games for me. But, you know. What a jerk. Oh, is Mr. Red actually going to show up? It's right here. Anyways, so yeah, um... I haven't done anything with it aside from just getting it to run, which took some effort. I just had to go in and manually modify configuration files just so that it would load up in a window instead of a full screen. And then I'll see how well it runs. I probably won't stream it due to the fact that I know that it's a glitchy game and... The graphical glitches get really bad at times. I mean, unplayably bad. And I don't know how to fix that. Didn't know how to fix that back at Windo back when I used Windows 7 either. Pretty sure I was using Windows 7 back then. Thirty-seven minutes in and I haven't really commentated on this game. Commentated on everything else because I thought it would be more interesting than this case. This case really just drags, doesn't it? Oh, I was also warned by Techie that at the rate that I'm going, which is another reason why I'm trying to actually speed my way through. And, um... Not just stop for five minutes at a time to go off on my tangents, but actually go off on my tangents and try to focus on the game. Um, it's apparently Spirit of Justice is a really, really long game. Long enough that he th he, he told me that I could be at this for another year at my rate. To which I responded, yeah, probably. What happens when you lose an hour a day? Those hours start adding up. Figure out that if it's one hour per five days a week per 52 weeks a year, I'm sure you could do the maths, but those hours start to add up a lot. I could greatly reduce the time spent on these games if I had more time, but Due to schedule conflicts, I ran out of options. I know I've said it before, but he looks a lot better not wearing the beanie. Um, this is not an- oh my god, the animations? His, his- his face when he's upset is actually kind of bad. I don't like it. Okay, Maya. Mia? Okay, Mia. And she learned that from a coffee addict who then attempted to make 
Phoenix Wright lose because he blamed Phoenix for Mia's death. Spoilers for anyone who hasn't played Trials and Tribulations. That one in, sp in particular because that's where all the lore happened. We didn't get much lore on Mia up until Trials and Tribulations. Trials and Tribulations is really when they went into the backstory of the characters. Before that, it was just Phoenix Wright became an attorney for reasons. But we didn't really get much information on how he met Mia, how he got into Mia and co. And then took over, it just sort of jumped us in there. Gave some background on Miles Edgeworth and why Miles Edgeworth became a prosecutor, which is why Phoenix Wright became an attorney. The importance of his first trial, and then the second game gave us an um backstory on Maya. And not really much else in that game. I don't remember there being a lot of lore in Justice for All. Trials and Tribulations though had a lot of lore. It was a huge lore dump. A very fun one at that. Alright, gonna stop here because I need to ask Techie an important question. Or discuss something with him over the stream because. Alright. So I remember back when I was playing Investigations, you asked me a question. You asked me, what was Wright doing? I think it was during the. Um. I think you asked, where, where was Wright during the events of investigations, and I had responded, I'm pretty sure he took a trip to Europe. I don't remember fully. I remember you asked me where Phoenix Wright was at a, in a particular time of the timeline, and I said, I'm pretty sure he mentioned he was going to Europe. And then you stopped and said, okay, remember that, that's going to be important later on. And then I forgot, because it never came up in Apollo Justice. Why would that be important, though? Is it just for this? Actually, if that's the case, then Phoenix Wright has known Athena for... quite a long time, actually. Because... Investi investigations happened before Apollo Justice. I don't think it had anything to do with the... Wait. No, I don't... Cause that was before I played Apollo Justice, I'm pretty sure. And I don't remember anything about him being in Europe from, um, from Apollo Justice. So the only thing I can think of is what was he doing during the time of investigations, which happened before Apollo Justice, which would mean that he's known about Athena. He's known Athena for over seven years. If the timeline in my head is the same as it is, is if the timeline in my head is accurate, and I could look at the Ace Attorney timeline, but spoilers. I can't actually look at the timeline. That would spoil the rest of this game in Spirit of Justice. Yes, I was right. I kind of figured it had something to do with this. So, that would suggest that he has known Athena for seven years. Damn. Oh my god. Am I right? A friend of yours needed help with legal work. I'm assuming not Francisca von Karma, although that would give me a reason. That would make the most sense, though. Von Karma prosecuted in Germany after, um, Justice for All. She had said that she returned to Germany to continue her career, 
and only came back during Trials and Tribulations because Edgeworth called her and said he needed her help. And she thought that she was going to finally get to take down Phoenix Wright. Lo and behold, she ends up taking on Miles Edgeworth in court. That was a really fun last case. Also still makes me sad because of the ending. My favorite prosecutors of all time. Probably my... That's a hard one. Miles Edgeworth is obviously my favorite prosecutor. But between Godot and Clavier, I... That's a tough one. It's really tough. So... Actually, I don't remember exactly when Investigations takes place. I know that Investigations takes place between Trials and Tribulations and Apollo Justice. But I don't think there's anything in there that gives us... well, actually... No, we don't have anything in there directly. I'm sure that the timeline gives a very... Th I'm sure that if I put some thought into it, do all the dates, I could piece it together, but... There's a seven-year gap between Trials and Tribulations and Apollo Justice. At some point in there... Nope, I was wrong. It would have to have happened in the first year, shortly after Trials and Tribulations. Because Phoenix Wright was still an attorney at the time. Theoretically. There's actually nothing to claim that. I can't back that claim. Investigations takes place. Alright. So my understanding is that the timeline is that shortly after Trials and Tribulations happens, is it during the credit sequence that it's mentioned that Phoenix Wright went to Europe? Because I can't remember now. But I remember that it's mentioned that Phoenix Wright went to Europe. During the time of um investigations, he would have been in Europe. Which would suggest that investigations happens within the first year before he loses his attorney's badge, because I'm pretty sure that he lost his attorney's badge after coming back from Europe. But I don't know for certain. Especially if he had to go to Europe to give legal help, I'd imagine he would still be an attorney at the time. It has something to do with Athena. I know that now. But I pretty much figured that out. Granted, all of this operates under a massive assumption that he only went to Europe once in that time span. Minions. I'm no one's minion. Well, I'm the minion of the evil demon judge of the underworld, because I'm an attorney, demon, demon attorney. I, <coughs> I kind of like this version of him. It's really funny. Reminds me of Hades from Kid Icarus Uprising. Except less ridiculous and much less ridiculous.
that doesn't make sense. If you really are Tin Mataro, why would you care about Jinxie? I think it's all an act. Uh, it skipped a line. Now, if only we had this, if only I had this back when, um, when the old bag had mentioned the fact that she threw a kid off a bridge, I would have been able to take a picture and it would have been hilarious. Oh, uh, am I a bad person? Eh, who cares? I mean, I could also just boot up Trilogy, go to that case, and it's within the first 10 minutes of the case, so I could just record that, scrub through the file, scrub through the video, and then I'd have a frame with it, which I could then screenshot and share. Or we can all just go and purchase Trilogy if you don't have it, and play through that case. I think that was... that was Justice for All because she didn't appear in Trials and Tribulations. That was Justice for All the final case. So, buy Justice for All, play through the final case, and realize that she mentions the fact that she threw a kid off a bridge because he disrespected her. Because he questioned the bridge being out, so she... No, she didn't throw him, she kicked him. Granted, that can mean a lot of things, but... She explicitly states that she kicked him off of the bridge, which to me would suggest that she put a boot to his head and he went down off a broken bridge. These games have some really terrible hidden stuff, but that's hilarious. <laughs> it wouldn't be as funny if it were real. If that really happened, it would not be a laughing matter. But it's also windy old bags, so it's funny. Oh, you know what I forgot to do? I forgot to present the attorney's badge, I've been so distracted. Also, do you like how I just casually slipped in the boot to the head reference? That was fun. What if I give you your freedom, but Jinxie goes to jail instead? <laughs> Apollo also just reminded me, the key to the Forbidden Chamber. Reminds me of the key to the channeling chamber. I'm not gonna lie. For a second there, I mixed up channeling chamber and forbidden chamber and thought I was back in Justice for All. Playing through the second case all over again. Ugh. Justice for All is not my favorite game. Actually, in Trilogy, it's my least favorite. With... Actually, Trials and Tribulations being my favorite of the three, having replayed all of them, I've determined that Trials and Tribulations is my favorite game. Did he turn into Yoda? Alright, I'm gonna try speaking the sentence out loud because back in like 10th or 11th grade, my English teacher, I forget which one, I forget which grade, anyways, my 
English teacher had mentioned that if you have trouble understanding what someone is saying, saying it out loud will actually help you comprehend it. To, um... What was that book? It was a book I didn't read. How did I graduate? I think it was The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn. Pretty sure that's what it was. Alright. Take the key from the killer to Damien. I think he turned into Yoda. I think Google Translate translated this. Hold on. I have to do something. Why, why are you going French to Japanese? I don't... Alright, here's what Google Translate says when translated into Japanese and back to English. Damien took the key from the murderer, where he swallowed it. The word you're looking for is whereupon, but... Um... That's weird. When did Firefox start putting the account icon next to everything else. That's really weird. Anyways. Go I, I actually have to go to Google Translate to understand some of these sentences because they're worded as if someone went through Google Translate. Apparently what we've been doing wrong is not translating it back and then translating it back again. If you only translate it once, you get or translations. You have to do it again and then it undoes the weird encryption. You know what? That's what it is. Google Translate is encrypting our, lang our languages so that we don't understand. And then you run it through it again and it decrypts the language and everything makes sense. Oh my god, I'm, I'm actually starting to get sick of noticing errors with this. He sought to bar the killer entry to the Forbidden Chamber, which... is... arguably grammatically correct, but it's really not. I mean, the use of the word bar here would work, but the way that this sentence is structured, the sentence doesn't work. Maybe I graduated because I'm just really good at pointing out the flaws with sentences. Okay, maybe it is just because he is talking weird. I'll accept that but I won't accept the Yoda sentence. That Yoda sentence was bad. showed him your attorney's badge because I can't skip this.
and I'm still trying to control it like the previous games, where I would just hit right to go to move. All right. So I think I'm supposed to go talk to Jinxie, which means... Not here. Here? Where's Jinxie? Why are you following me, lady? one thing. Clearly not paying attention is not doing me any favors. I wonder if he's the killer. I don't know. Wait. Well, I'm pretty sure he's the killer. And, spoiler alert. If you don't want to know spoilers. Uh, who am I kidding? By saying spoiler alert, I've pretty much given away the fact that he's the killer. It was obvious. So obvious. Oh, for a second there, I thought she slapped me. I got scared. There are a lot of things that are bothering me. That model is creepy. Well, back here. Where is Jinxie? There she is. I'm still the demon lawyer. <laughs> I, I really love that, and I wish we could have more things like that. Also... Come on, guys! You missed Pat. you missed a past tense. There we go. That's better. 
so... I know I shouldn't be this surprised, considering... You know, spirit channeling in Trilogy. And Apollo's mystical abilities to feel... See, not feel. See... People's... Lying? Not really emotions, more of just seeing when they're lying. But for whatever reason, I'm still struggling to get over the idea that these demons are real in this universe of Japanica. And that they're actually capable of possessing and messing with people. Oh, hold on. I know I've already presented it to her, but... You've met him! You met... the demon I just described. <laughs> We're all secretly in hell. And this is what it's like. I miss Little Thief. Which, out of context, makes no sense, but Investigations... the gim One of the gimmicks for Investigations, because Investigations had two or three. I don't consider the actual movement to be a gimmick. But there was actual movement instead of just staring at a picture. But yeah, in Investigations, one of the gimmicks was logic, where you would take pieces of logic and shove them together and then update your evidence and your notebook? I forget what everything was called. Banner? Anyways, instead of the court record, Edgeworth had something else. Like a planner or something. And the logic was kind of annoying. But the other thing was Little Thief, which I think was, well, Organizer, that's what it was. Thanks, Techie. And Little Thief was not widely used. It was used in a couple of parts, and I wish that we got more functionality out of it. Because that was one of my favorite parts of the game. But essentially what it could do was create a holographic representation of the crime scene. And the more data that you plugged into it, the more accurate it became until you were solving crimes staring at holograms. And much like every other Ace Attorney game, you magically turned out to be correct in your assumptions and always found the bad guy. Magic. I miss Little Thief. I miss the ability to actually create a holographic representation of the crime scene before the crime or during the crime. Uh, it was... I guess it was used a couple of times. It was used for three cases. Not very much in any of those three cases. Primarily because one of the biggest issues was that... The guy following us for those three episodes... Would argue that... That's entirely circumstantial, and it doesn't really prove anything, because you can literally just plug in data and have it solve. Um, it, it's very biased, and I agree with that. It was just a really neat gimmick. my bad. I misread the sentence and saw accusing instead of accused. I don't know how. I guess I'm just looking for typos now and creating them with my mind. There might be something wrong with me. 
Doesn't bat. Doesn't matter. Not batter. I could go for some batter. Some delicious pancake batter. Damn, I don't want pancakes. And waffles. And bacon. I'm a breakfast person. Says the person who actually never eats breakfast, and when he does, it's usually lunch or dinner items. What can I say? I don't like making breakfast. I love breakfast food. As a wise man who was also not that wise, but was very funny, once said, I don't understand why anyone would, be, would eat anything but breakfast food. He's also the guy who ate an entire T-bone steak, a massive T-bone steak, for breakfast every day. He's a man I can respect. I like steak. I like steak a lot. I also don't eat it that much, because steak is expensive and hard to cook. Have I ever cooked steak? I don't think I've ever cooked steak. I've cooked a pork chop before. One. I have cooked one pork chop in my entire life, and it turned out terrible. Through no fault of my own. It was freezer burned. I don't know if you've ever had freezer burned pork chop. It's disgusting. It's actually inedible. It, it, like, the only way I can describe it is, like, if you've ever had a piece of stringy chicken, imagine that. But on a much larger scale. But that is all that the pork chop is, is stringy chicken. It's unchewable. It, it's really tough. It doesn't taste good. And the texture's just stringy chicken texture. It's gross. It was... <laughs> made me really sad because I had seasoned that pork chop really well. I spent a lot of time getting that pork chop perfect. At least, my definition of pork. My definition of pork. <laughs> I am having a lot of trouble right now. My definition of perfect when it comes to food. Which for a steak would be medium rare. I love a really... I... I I don't understand how anyone can ever order a steak well done. Or even medium. Medium's a little too cooked. Depending on where you go, it actually differs. I've been to a place that a medium steak is what I would order as a medium rare pretty much anywhere else. But medium well and well done is just overcooked. You may as well just be eating a hamburger. You're ruining the whole purpose of steak, which is... I don't know. But then you go to France and find out that in France, hamburgers are not really cooked. They're pretty much served rare. And the thing is, it works. Because what I found out from my French teacher from France... God, I had a great French teacher during high school. One before her, not so much. But I had an actual French teacher. So, got to learn a lot. And as it turns out, beef in France is very different from beef in America. Their cows are much better taken care of. You can actually eat hamburger cooked rare and not get sick. Because they're so well taken care of that bacteria and diseases don't really have time to infect them. And I'd imagine if they found out that a cow had gotten a disease, they probably wouldn't ever ship that beef out anywhere. It's just amazing how different the quality of meat is from country to country. And it just, it shocked me that you could actually, like, cook hamburger meat. You could, like, just brown it on the outside. And it wouldn't make you sick at all. Or the likelihood is tiny. But then in America, no, you, you just, you can't. You'd be risking a lot. But steak is... 
I ended up finding out why it is that steak can be cooked less than hamburger meat. And the explanation made a lot of sense. Really, what it has to do is the preparation and where the meat specifically comes from. And then I found out something that I hadn't really thought of before, which is that meat is muscles. Most cuts of meat off of an animal are that animal's muscles. Which I never thought of before. And then I realized that makes sense. And explains a fair chunk. Yeah. Alright, so um... The thing about steak is that any bacteria... Any... Any bacteria or anything that gets on it is pretty much going to be stuck on the outside. Because it's a... It's a chunk of muscle. And it takes a lot of time to bury through all of that to get inside of it. So steak can usually be cooked to an external temperature of, I think it's 350. I think 350 is the required temperature to kill bacteria. And other disease-inducing microorganisms. But ground beef is, well, ground. So any of that bacteria that would be on the outside is now mixed in with everything, so it has to be cooked all the way through, because the bacteria is going to be all the way through. Just stuff you find when you actually browse Reddit and every once in a while get a good explain like I'm five question and a good explain like I'm five answer, which I then bring to the stream and butcher horribly. That's going in a clip. That's not going in a clip. That's too long to go in a clip. That was another that was another unintentional pun, but I caught the pun this time. God. It took me 30 seconds to realize I made a pun in that one clip, and that is Well, I'd say it's my favorite, but it's also the only real clip in there. Oh my god, I can't believe I missed the pun. When I'm talking about, like, perfume, and then was like, was perfume a pun? And then was like, wait a minute, that's, no. No, I made a pun about something else. make me happy that the game has written away the big contradiction that I rage quit over. And there was a lot of other stuff going on, but I'm just going to joke about the fact that I rage quit over a contradiction that just didn't fit in my head. Which is the fact that Jinxie had to have gotten into the room, so the room could not have been locked, and the key dropped on the inside because she got inside. That it? I don't know if that's it, but I'm assuming that's it. Oh wait, don't. Oh, I can't examine, which tells me that's not it. You know what? The note system in this game is the greatest part of this game.
because every time I get lost, I check notes, and it literally tells me what to do. I'm like, oh. Granted, unlike in the previous titles, I can't just examine every single room, which means that it doesn't come down to have I actually checked everything and every single area and presented all the evidence to everyone. So it does make it easier that there's a lot less, there's a lot fewer places to just get stuck at. But it also helps that notes will let me know what I need to do. In case I forget to do something. So it's missing a piece. Oh my god. Guys. I just solved the case. Alright, hear me out. So, according to Jinxie, the only two people who knew about the cup being on the statue were her and the dead guy. Alderman QB, was it? Kyubi. I think it's... I'm just gonna call him Kyubi. So, my guess is that to prove the killer is Labelle, he's going... he's going to mention the statue. And he's going to mention the cup. And when he does, I present the statue and say, you shouldn't have known that there was a cup on the statue. And then there's going to be an objection. He's going to freak out and start, well, freaking out. And then the prosecution is going to be like, OBJECTION! It's entirely possible he could have known. For some reason. To which Apollo is going to reply, yes, but the statue was made in secret, so there's no way he could have known. Ergo, he's the killer. And... yeah. Have I mentioned that these games are predictable? I mean, they, they really are. Thanks for trusting in me, dude, bro. Oh, come on! She slapped the camera, but he doesn't get one shot- Oh, that- <laughs> It just teleported onto his head! <laughs> I want to rewind and watch that again, that was... I'm, I, I'm sitting here like, really guys? You couldn't just paste a flat piece of paper on his head? Lo and behold, the next sentence, it just magically appears. I am justice. Oh, I, I just I can't get over the fact that I was like I, I started freaking out about the fact that the um the what are those things called? Now I can't remember. I'm gonna call it a ward. The ward didn't appear on his model, and then it appeared the next sentence as I pressed A. And it's gone. Damn. Well, who's gonna stop us? Oh god, it's this jerk. There's a gun. I need a gun. Is there a gun in here? I don't see a gun. Key! That's a gun, right?
Apollo Justice has not learned anything from Phoenix Wright Trilogy. What the hell? Oh, come on, Apollo, open your eyes. It's clearly coming from his shoulder pads. His massive shoulder pads. What the hell? I can't decide if I should be mad, mad or just extremely happy at this, because this is amazing. <laughs> Oh my god. The shoulder pads have cell phones built into them. I think you have to custom make them. But why was the one on the left continuing to ring? Anyways, so Apollo Justice has not learned that presenting things that pretty clearly um, tie someone into a crime tends to end in a fire extinguisher to the neck or 6,000 volts. Or was it 8,000 volts? A large number of thousands of volts. And by a large, I mean less than 10,000. But more than 5,000. Either 6 or 8,000. But attorney's badge. My attorney's badge is. Wait, it's 600,000 volts? My bad. I was actually way off. It was not between 5,000 and 10,000, it was between 500,000 and 10,000. One million? Pretty sure that's one million. One zero 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 would be one million. How have you not messed up at all in this game? Oh, wait. I forgot what I was trying to show him. The answer is that I'm the only person here trying to show off the attorney's badge and get funny responses. There aren't a lot of things to show off and get funny responses for, and it's very rare that they implement funny responses. Normally there's just some go-to don't show this. Really? You... Well, you saw it here first, guys. Techie just admitted on stream to cheating. I guess we know who's going to win the Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney race. And the other race. The Rise from the Ashes race. It's me, because you're a cheater. I'm just kidding, I love you. I can get away with saying that, right? Probably. Eh, who cares? Can I put this guy on r slash entitled parents? I don't think he's a parent. I guess just entitled people. Insane people, ace attorney. I'll be right back, guys. I've got to go make that subreddit now. That subreddit would get boring fast. There's only so many characters in each of the games. And most of the non-main characters are insane. So, by that logic, all we'd have to do is upload each character once. And there you go. Nothing to be added to the subreddit unless we... 
get another Ace Attorney game, which we probably aren't going to get. Just like we aren't going to get another Metal Gear Solid. Or probably not another Super Smash Brothers, and probably not another Kid Icarus. Because Kid Icarus and Super Smash Brothers are done by the same person, and I believe he has... I believe he stated he is not interested in another Kid Icarus, and I believe he also stated he wasn't interested in another Super Smash Brothers anytime soon. But what do I know? The most I know is that Telltale Games apparently died last year, and I was unaware. Well, if that's a crime, I want you put on the death penalty. Well, this went a lot better than 600,000 volts and a fire extinguisher to the head. Oh, I missed one! Trials and Tribulations! I don't remember what happened in that one. Go there. You threaten the guy with evidence that shows how he is tied into the case. And something happens. Oh, and how could I forget the Mafia? From Justice for All. No. Wait. Hold on. Was that just... No, that was, um... That was Phoenix Wright, Ace Attorney 1, not Justice for All. Because that was Steel Samurai. Which happened in the first game, and then the Jam and Ninja was second game. And I don't think we had a Steel Samurai in the third game. I don't want to know more about this rumor. Oh look, I can't go back at that. Which, I guess, means very little. Because that didn't have much aside from there being rumor, which... If that's important and needs to be reiterated, I would have the statement that's literally labeled the rumor about Jinxie or something like that. I'm starting to think this is all made up by you, Mr. Blackmailer. Whoa! Animation! He's gone.
Why is the other one ringing? <laughs> Advertises personal and private stuff. Interesting. Let's, you know, just say that we're right in front of the guy who, who I want to accuse. Jacques. So at some point I need to return to the detention center. Examine button. exactly where it was, but I had a very strong hunch I would find this. Oh, it's not gonna make me go through the really annoying rebuilding puzzle of Rise from the Ashes. I'm really sad that I don't speak my thoughts all the time, because once again I'm going to point out something, which is, my thought was it had something to do with the two foxes in front of the doors, or actually only one of them. But the thing is they looked the same, so I didn't give it a second thought, but I was like, the most logical thing would be if it had to do with one of the statues, because those things stand out. I've got a theory. These controls suck.
Oh my god. It took me out of examine mode for that. Is it just me, or does it seem like... Oh, I don't know. Oh, good. Wow, this was awfully easy. I didn't even have to think. Oh, I was wrong. Huh. So I thought that the foxes were supposed to face away from each other. But according to this, they need to face towards each other. Guess I wouldn't have solved that correctly. At first, I would have probably figured it out. God, that's loud and shaky. And... Magic! It holds... Oh, an angry Tasmanian devil. We put down your pants. You know, at no point have I ever been able to mention that. There just hasn't been a good setup. I'm proud of myself for that one. Well then, this is different. And one of them is missing. Already I see three things. One. Huh. Does that look familiar to anyone else? Huh. LaBelle has been in this room. LaBelle is the killer. I've been saying that from the beginning, right? <laughs> Is anyone else shocked? Is there anyone in chat who's actually surprised by this turn of events? Because I'm not. That's two. And that's three. Those are the three things that stuck out. Oh. Okay, so that thing that I said stuck out turned out to be the statue. Doesn't that also look familiar? Because that reminds me of Filch. My 
I'm sad because I wanted to see that weird thing. Not actually what I meant to point at. That's what I wanted. why it took me so long to notice this. One thing left to look at that I know of. Okay, that's grasping a bit. So I won't mention what I think that is, because I think it's a reference to something. But it's such a long stretch that I'm not entirely certain. Wow, widget. I hate this game right now. I go for the scroll, I mention that I thought it was the scroll, I click on the scroll, and it says statue time. And then I find out that I had to click under the scroll. Really, game? Also, that guy also reminds me of Filch, but... Probably not. I can get back to examining. So Filch, if I recall, is right here. I see stomping on people. Why does it look like he's dancing? Oh yeah, he stole the bracelet again. He starts dancing, then he stomps, and the next thing you know, he's got your stuff. Sorry, I just want to take a moment to make fun of someone. But I won't say who. So, I'm in a server on Discord. For a game that exists, it's still in development. Keep in mind, it's still in development, it's open source, and there's no server for it, and no documentation on how to set up a server for it, because on the readme it explicitly states that he's not going to explain, he's not going to teach you how to set it up, because he doesn't have the tools set up for it, because it's not ready to be deployed. In essence, it's still in development. There's no alpha, no beta, no release at all. Someone in the server said, I'm just going to wait for this... Hold on, let me read the message directly. I will wait for this game to release. Which is an interesting statement, because that server has been dead for two days? 
longer than two, four days. No one has been active. It's not a very active server. It's not a very well-known game. It took me a while to find it. And I found it through another game of a similar caliber. This really acts as a, a slightly more complicated and much better clone of the other game. All this to say, what else are you gonna do? You don't really have much choice other than to wait for it to get released. Trust me, I know from experience setting that thing up is a pain and not really worth the effort without the tools to get it set up properly. The README tells you one small thing about setting it up, which is that you have to set it up yourself. It doesn't tell you how. It literally just says, this is not meant for hosting. You're not intended to host it yet. But if you're going to, go use this tool. But it tell, doesn't tell you how to use the tool or how you're supposed to route everything because it's really just a routing tool. It just tells it where to route all the various things, but... I couldn't even begin to figure out how I'm supposed to set that up, so I won't. I'm waiting for him to release to release his version, and like Mindtest, it's essentially a game engine. I, I don't know if anyone knows what Hacker Experience is, but it's in the same place as Hacker Experience. But it's not Hacker Experience, because that went down. Still waiting for HE2. Going to be waiting for years because the funding for that doesn't exist. I can't fund it. I would love to, but... I can't fund it, and it's taken so long that he's gone back and been like, If anyone wants a refund, I will find some way to refund you. Even though he knows he's broke, and his dev team changes every couple of months because of that. Anyways, so, essentially what this is is the mind test for... Well hacker experience. It's a very, very extensible framework with a base game that gets released with it, and the design per choice was you can essentially expand the game. It's not even limited to just what it's designed for. He's outright said you could, if I recall correctly, this one was outright said you could make other types of games with it. You'd have to do a bit of screwing around with the code, but it's designed for people to pretty much have their own versions of Hacker Experience or this, which I don't give the name of. Not yet. I might actually consider streaming it, even though it is a web game. I'd consider st <clears throat> streaming it. Just to get him some, um, just to get him some publicity, because I really like the work he's done. And from my understanding, it's one person making an entire game. And if anyone here knows anything about hacker experience, that was a couple of people. The code was very bad. It's also closed source, and I found out a lot. After it went down and I read the information on it, I found out that he did a lot of, they did a lot of poor coding, and I've, for a while there, I was keeping up with what they were doing. The devs had a blog, and they'd blog about how dumb their code base was. HE2 got, like, two rewrites because they couldn't get the code base down. They had so much trouble with it. So I'm really excited to see how this goes, because this is open source. Which means once it's fully released and people are able to mess around with it on their own and work out their own mods and stuff for it, for their own hosted version, obviously you're not allowed to mod the live version that he's hosting. But, you know, by that point, it'll start being people can start pushing updates there and helping him out with it. I haven't really looked at the code base much. I've looked at it enough and I learned a lot about PHP. I thought I knew PHP. I don't. I learned from this that there are things about PHP I never knew. Number one, PHP, PHP CLI. Or, you know, running PHP in a command line. Number two, 
was that there is a PHP package manager similar to Gradle, which is Java's equivalent of, sort of equivalent to PyPI, which is Python's equivalent to Ubuntu repos. Sort of, but not really. Or Node's NPM. Honestly, I shouldn't have been that surprised that it existed. Pretty much every programming language now has some form of library repo. I did, I did get it running. I managed to successfully get it running in the command line, but because it was running the command line, I couldn't host it, so I couldn't really test it. So I haven't messed around with it because I'm waiting for a release. He's not sorry. Raccoon Dog, that's a good one. Can I present this to you? Oh, right. But yeah, um, I think when it gets fully released, depending on what's happening, I may actually just take a stream to have some fun with it. What I may end up doing is doing, is having a day where I do like a double stream. So, you know, I, I stream at, say, my usual time during the week, back before I switch to nighttime streaming for Techie, if I could have a moderator in chat. I, I may just stream during the day, a little bit of this game as soon as it gets released, and then if I'm still doing Apollo Justice, or not Apollo Justice, if I'm still doing Ace Attorney, which I probably will be, because it should be released within the next couple of months. So um, if that's the case, then I'll do Ace Attorney at night and I'll just have two streams in one day. Oh, good, he's glad I asked. That looks familiar. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh my god, I did it again? I predicted the future again! I was just like, this... This odd-shaped thing looks like Filch, and then lo and behold, Filch shows one, and I'm just like, oh. So now I know what that is. Huh. You're his grandson because he's your grandfather? Shocking. Why is this in here? And today I learned Braille for the days of the week. I didn't realize that that was... I, I don't know why I didn't realize this, but I never thought about it, but... So I have a pillbox in my room for some reason. I have a feeling I know why it's in here, but I haven't used it in such a long time that I'm just like, why is it in here? I don't remember. And every single day has a different, every single day has some braille on it. And each one's different, including Saturday and Sunday, which to me would suggest that there's braille for specific days of the week. Which makes sense. Well, what do you know? I don't know why this is important. I love how... I, I love how casual he is about the fact that we broke into the Forbidden Chamber. 
just like, oh, okay. But then when we first show up, he starts swearing at us because we were cursing his village by not following their superstitions. I have a little bit of time left. I have approximately nine minutes left. So I can get through this guy. No. Um, Techie, as I mentioned, every single day has a different braille. Saturday and Sunday are represented both as S. It's not a representation of the letter because that's what I thought it would be, but then S, both S's would be the exact same. They're not. One is one dot, one is four dots. The braille isn't a representation of the letter, I think it's a representation of the day that that letter represents. Double representation. I'll get through this last one and then I'll probably end the stream. So, does anyone have any doubts about it being Libel? Because I think at this point it's pretty damn obvious. It's Libel. I refuse to believe that. Also, he stole my superstitions. Oh, I really want to get through this part. Look. Wait. Verify something? So you did say Jinxie, right? Oh no, he says Ten Mataro. I don't know how I've managed to bypass the detention center three times now. I 
I'm really, really convinced that this is just an act that he's doing to prevent Jinxie from getting in trouble. But... I plan on continuing from there. And then I yawned. Anyways, I think that's all I'm going to... That's, that's all we're going to be able to get through tonight, and that was a lot more than usual, so I'm happy about that. I'm not very good at this, am I? <laughs> I'm not very good at streaming in general, but I'm a lot better at the actual content versus the ending part, so... I mean, I can just sit here silently for three minutes, and then we'll have covered the full time from 7.50 to 9. 10. 9? 10. <laughs> oh my god, I'm so tired. I'm probably sleep deprived more than tired, but I am really tired. Didn't get to up the animations counter. That's disappointing. I should decrease the animations count. Because of that one thing I said earlier in the stream where I insulted the animations. Well. This case does drag. It's a little interesting to me. I'll give it that. Just, It's a really long case that doesn't have a lot of substance. And is... Just, it's eh. I miss the spirit mediums. Spirit mediums are fun. I, I, I don't know. I guess the spirit mediums made a lot more sense. I don't know why I was so ready to accept the spirit mediums, but not the demons. No, God forbid I accept the demons as fact in this game. But spirit mediums are okay. Well, I'll see you next mission.